second, then we back it up That's the bit. arm's length, and they still see her pretty much. So, hey folks, Hi. Papa Joe, my daughter-in-law Jessie again. She's going to join us again tonight for our Christmas challenge. Uh, it's the 20th day, so we're on chapter 20. Uh, the challenge is, is to read one book of Luke, the chapter of Luke. You read one uh, the book of Luke, and you read one chapter every night. Tonight we're on chapter 20. So, you want to do an opening prayer, or you want me to? Well, I can do an opening prayer. That's Go fine. for it. Okay, Heavenly Father, we're so very blessed and grateful that we have this opportunity to come together with you with others that want to uh, share the many blessings that come from reading your word. Um, we're very grateful for all of the positive things going on in the world and we certainly want to take a moment to pray for our country and the direction that it's headed and we hope that you'll guide us safely through the many trials ahead of us in jesus name we pray amen and all god's people said amen, amen. you want to read you want me to i can read you can read whatever it don't matter you're the guest tonight you won't get to do this too many nights with <laughs> that's me. right i don't really so, get on youtube too much yep. so one day, as he was teaching the people in the temple courts and preaching the gospel, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, together with the elders, came up to him. Tell us by what authority you are doing these things, they said. Who gave you this authority? He replied, I will also ask you a question. Tell me John's baptism. What is it from heaven or from men? They discussed it among themselves and said, If we say from heaven, he will ask why didn't you believe him but if we say from men all all the people will stone us because they are persuaded that john was a prophet so they answered we don't know where it was from jesus said neither will i tell you by what authority i am doing these things the parable of the tenants he went on to tell the people this parable a man planted a vineyard, rented it to some farmers, and went away for a long time at, a, at harvest time. He sent a servant to the tenants so they would give him some of the fruit of the vineyard. But the tenants beat him, and they sent him away empty-handed. He sent another servant, but that one also they beat and treated shamefully and sent away empty-handed. He, he sent still a third and they wounded him and threw him out. Then the owner of the vineyard said, What shall I do? I will send my son whom I love. Perhaps they will respect him. But when the tenants saw him, they talked the matter over. This is the heir, they said. Let's kill him, and, in, and the inheritance will be ours. So they threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What then will the owner of the vineyard do then? He will come over and he will come and kill those tenants and give the vineyard to others. When the people heard this, they said, May this never be. Jesus looked directly at them and asked, Then what is the meaning of that which is written? The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. Everyone who falls on that stone will be broken into pieces. You want me to read something? <laughs> yeah, go ahead, because okay. when I get to the red, I can't see. That's fine. <laughs> but he, uh, let me back up just a little bit, so it makes a little bit of sense here. Mm -hmm. I hate breaking off in the middle of a sentence. If I can help, it. help the page, <laughs> okay. Everyone who falls on that stone will be broken to pieces, but he whom it falls will be crushed. The teachers of the law and the chief priests looked for a way to arrest him immediately because they knew he had spoken this parable against them, but they were afraid of the people. Keeping a close watch on him, they sent spies who pretended to be honest. They hoped to catch Jesus and something he said so that they might hand him over to the power and authority of the governor. So the spies questioned him. Teacher, we know that you speak and teach what is right and that you do not show partiality, but teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. 
Is it right for us to pay taxes to Caesar or not? He saw through their duplicy and said to them, Show me a Demarus, de 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 whose portrait and inscription are on it. Caesar's, they replied. Jesus said to them, Give to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what is God. They were unable to trap him in what he had, un had said there in public. And astonished by his answers, they became silent. Some of the Sardis who say there is a resurrection came to Jesus with a question. Teacher, they said, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies and leaves a wife but no children, the man must marry the widow and have children for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first one married a woman and died childless. The second and then the third married her, and in the same way the seven died, leaving no children. Finally the woman died too. Now then, at this resurrection, whose wife will she be since the heavens were married to her? Since the seven was married to her. Jesus replied, The people of this age marry and are given in marriage. But those who are considered worthy of taking part in that age and in the resurrection from the dead will neither marry nor be given in marriage, and they can no longer die. For they are like the angels. They are God's children. Since they are children of the resurrection, but in the account of the bush, even Moses showed that the dead rises. For he calls the Lord the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. For to him all are alive. Some of the teachers of the law responded, Well said, teacher, and no one dared to ask him any more questions. Then Jesus said to them, How is it that they say the Christ is the son of David? David himself declared in the book of Palms, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. David calls him Lord. How then can he be his son? While all the people were listening, Jesus said to his disciples, Beware of the teachers of the law. They like to walk around in flowing robes and love to be greeted in the marketplaces and have the most important seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for a show make lengthy prayers. Such men will be punished most severely. That's the end of tonight's reading. So, most interesting. That is very interesting. That is, so, that what did you take out of it? We'll take a few minutes and talk about it. What did you take out of it? Well, I, I thought that, and this is considering current events right now, the interesting part about the men in robes, the law keepers and such, Right. You know, what, what exactly does well, that mean to you? Well, to me, what it, it caught my attention. He, he's telling sure us to beware, and with the way he did that, it makes me come to mind, and I've preached about it before. Is you see all these fancy preachers on TV? Yes. They've got these oh, super mega big church. mega church. Yes. Uh, they've got Rolexes and they've got their own private planes and they own this mansion. Thousand dollar suits. I mean, and... these are the Pharisees and, and and the people of the law that he's talking about. Okay. You no, know. I, I, that so and and he's telling you beware of them. Mm -hmm. And for me to see them on TV because I don't watch them, but you can't help but see them once in oh, a while and online. Sure. Mm -hmm. You know, to me, it's like Jesus warned us. Look at all these people. I mean, they're filled up. Look at the big one here in Houston with, oh, what's his name? Joel Osteen. Yeah. Right. You know, and I'm like, do you people not read the Bible yourself? Do you not hear his warnings? It's not very you know? humble, the behaviors. Correct. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it's just more warnings that he's given us that, unfortunately, most people just don't heed. Yeah. Now, that's my take on it. Uh, yeah, so, I, I gather that, too. I think that's pretty uh, accurate. 
I well, understand. Would you care to do the closing prayer? You want me to? I can do the closing prayer. Go so for it. Much. Okay. Heavenly Father, we thank you so very much for giving us this opportunity to come together and read this word. We ask that you please help us use the knowledge we've gained tonight to guide us in a positive way throughout our lives. That's the whole purpose of reading the word. And we're very grateful to have an opportunity to do it, an opportunity to fellowship and be together as a family, the opportunity to be out here with uh, with others that want to hear and listen and follow your word. We're very grateful for that. And uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And all God's people said? Amen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, appreciate you joining us tonight. Sis, I appreciate you helping yes, us. You're a sweetheart. I appreciate you allowing me to be a part of it. We've been doing Thank a lot you. of cooking <laughs> and, and barbecuing, and and I've just been Ooh. harassing the dickens out of her. I don't know if you can so. tell, but he knows how to eat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> I ain't sharing my cake with you now. Well, I'm getting my chubby cheeks, too. Oh, okay. <laughs> Y'all have a blessed evening. Thanks for joining us. Good night. Remember, good Lord loves you. So do we. Good night now. Bye.